so we'll hold questions till the end. And uh, Isabella? That's good. Okay, so I'm waiting. I changed a little bit the presentation to kind of based on what I heard today. I said that while he's coming. Oh, it's not my time. No? And so there's a lot of text I'm going to browse through, but I thought I was going to bring some example of some ways in which I think about using grace to combine with other, you know, data set and try to leverage on the strengths to understand the aquifer. course of my computer. There we go. Okay, so I didn't change the title, but I just, I'm just gonna, you know, talk a little bit about, you know, Grace as, you know, an integrated measure of total water storage, and so, you know, what are we seeing, what we compare, but uh, I'm gonna just, uh, I, this is like a little bit provocatory, you know, fine scale variability with Grace, what can we do? And then I'm gonna look about, you know, uh, a few a few examples. We try to see how can we characterize the regional drought, uh, you know, and evolution and impact using multiple satellite data, and uh, and then showing some example of some synergistic activity using drought index. And uh, and I think that that's not my time. Two twenty. <laughs> okay, sorry. <laughs> and uh, and then you know some comparison in some places that are remote, and uh, you know some work that we've been doing. Uh, comparing, you know, using GRACE together, you know, to evaluate Earth system model, you know, and we develop an approach uh, to a diagnostic approach. Okay, so this is like a lot of text, but the idea is like we try to look, we have a lot, of, we have all these remote sensing observation that we can use as a proxy for, you know, water variability in an aquifer. They are characterized, you know, we talk about, you know, they have different sensitivity. Great is the total water storage. Soil moisture is the top when I talk about remote sensing, zero to five centimeter. And then we look at precipitation. And all of those data sets are characterized by different spatial scale. So can we use them together and how can we use it in a synergistic approach? And so if you look at the, do we, do we have a, the green? The, oh, oops, no, I wanted to go. Okay, it's okay. The top, the, if you look on the left, uh, so this is some work that we did for Texas. If you look at the circle in the, you know, in the top right figure, that's the grace footprint. It's about 400, you no, know, 300 kilometer, 350 kilometer radius. And basically grace gives you an average of the total water storage changing in that area. And in this case, we are looking at an area, you know, this is like the land cover from Modis. And, you know, we have like the footprint is mostly shrub, you know, so we just take a footprint where we have like, a, you know, dominant by some vegetation kind. And, and then what, what the example on the bottom left shows, uh, you know, this is like the uh, answer uh, E and two soil moisture at the original resolution. And each, so the blue line is uh, the grace average, what grace would see. So the average over that footprint, the red line is the time series of soil moisture in the center point, and the gray line on the top part are at every point, every grid cell, you know, within the footprint. And if we remove the, the uh, seasonal variability, what we find, you find that the, those lines fall on, on top of each other. And the idea is that which means that my, my average is representative of the interannual variability at each single play. And the idea is that when we can do this, and this is also a function of the fact that we have a surface subsurface couple, you know, aquifer, you know, then we can use the information of grace representative of what occurs also at the subscale. And so on the right is an example. So we try to say, okay, now let's look at the, all this data set, and this is for that footprint, and try to see, can we use this information, this different information to characterize the drought, you know, evolution and the sensitivity of the response of the vegetation. So what we did, if you see uh, the top part, you have the time series, you have precipitation from GPCP, and there's, and I'm just gonna go fast here, but the idea is that you can see the uh, soil moisture follow very well the, uh, the precipitation, and Grace also agreed relatively well until the 2011 drought, which is a very strong drought. And if you look at the vegetation, also we have like three proxy used. And 
after 2011, they kind of got decoupled, and uh, soil moisture respond to precipitation, which makes sense. And and basically, grace has a stronger memory, you know, and uh, the recovery. And so on the bottom, what we look, we look at, can we kind of identify a characteristic time scale for, you know, before and after for those, you know, for those, uh, uh, for, for, uh, for, uh, for, uh, for the signal, for the time variability. And we define it as, you know, as the, basically, the lag time for which the amplitude of the autocorrelation decreased by one over E, uh, uh, by one over E. And, and so what we find, we find that before the big drought, today have about the same lag, and then after, the response is different. So Grace has a much bigger memory. And the idea is like, okay, so can we use this to characterize this location, the, the response of the system? Uh, Next, and this is an example. So this is an example using, okay, so we define a drought index. They are very convenient way to compare, you know, things. Oh, I'm gonna go. And this is a, a GRACE DSI standardized drought index, and we compare it with different uh, drought indices. The idea is that this provides a different piece of information respect to what we would have with the different, you know, with the other drought index, because it's sensible to the total water storage. And if you see, you can tell that for the 2011, GRACE has a different response to the drought. The right shows the correlation between uh, GRACE DSI and PDSI, and so, uh, significant everywhere where it's not the lower value correspond to, uh, you know, the, in the Missouri when we had a very big heat wave, so we have a, 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 a drought that was driven more by, you know, in, uh, you know, was affecting more the surface soil moisture. And so grace basically doesn't show this big effect why the, both the vegetation and PDSI move together. And that's a comparison also with groundwater storage well. Okay, I'm gonna browse quickly. Uh, we evaluate this in the, in the US and we have a, so this is like an information that we can use at the global scale. We have a characterized by an uncertainty and allowed to, again, it's complementary to the other drought in, so it can be used to interpret. The, the signal. I'm gonna show quickly. This is an example of, uh, you know, this is an evaluation. This is a very difficult area. We're looking at high mountain Asia. And can we use GRACE to uh, evaluate a model? And the idea is that, you know, so this is a comparison between GRACE total water storage and total water storage. And, uh, and we, we define a variable to see the total water storage over the glacier region. Uh, for the Western Himalayan and the Himalaya glacier. And uh, the idea is that can we, you know, the implication that if we can evaluate this model, then we have more confidence in what, how we can use it for projection. And we can see capture very well the interannual variability, especially in the Western, in the Western Himalaya. And, uh, in, uh, 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 and, and only we have some time where it doesn't meet, uh, in, miss the, the peak, and in the Himalaya is missing part of the track. And this is consistent with the fact that this model doesn't have ice melting, and so in the region where we expect to have more of the ice glacier melting, we are missing a trend. And the implication of this is that, you know, it gives an idea of how the model is representative of the water resources, and also, you know, give us information about the process they are driving you know, the change in the glacier. And I'm just gonna show, I'm gonna skip this slide and I'm gonna show you just another last example of, and I'm over time, and this is about, you know, uh, this is the comparison. Okay, just look at the left part. And, uh, you know, the idea is that can we use GRACE to evaluate uh, the model output and use it in a diagnostic way to improve the output? And in this case, this is a water balance model. Uh, we separate we, if we, we separate the upper basin from the lower basin because in the upper basin, most of the signal is caused by the glaciers. And we, we compare the model when it's forced by two different forces. And you can see when it's forced with the MERA, Clearly, the, the amplitude of the signal is very different from one from grace. And it turns out the MERA is, is very dry in this region, and that is due to this. In the lower basin, where we have, you know, what, what we find, the model has what is called is a, is a, an, a, an, a, in, in a UGW, is a, it, no, it represents groundwater as an unlimited bucket. So every time the system doesn't provide enough precipitation of water, the water gets extracted by this, this infinite bucket. And with MERA, because the, the input is too dry, so we don't provide enough precipitation, you can see that you have a very steep trend in groundwater withdrawal, and this is because the model, you know, allows the system to extract the water. And uh, with the era intern, we have a better agreement Still, 
we don't match all the trend, and this is due, you know, we, we, we have interact with people of the model, is due to the fact that, you know, we are missing part of the recharge effect of the deep groundwater recharge. And I'm just gonna skip the conclusion. Sorry, I went long. I thought those were examples of, they could show how you can synergistically use it.